Hello, gentlemen. Uh, this is Professor Peter Vacunta in the United States of America. Uh, today, I would like to talk to you folks uh, about uh, a linguistic phenomenon that is uh, very unique to Cameroon. Uh, I am uh, I'm professor of, of you know African literature and languages. I'm also a linguist, uh, author of many books in uh, English, French, Pidgin English, uh, and Confrangle. And so to, today I'll be, uh, you know, talking to you. This is actually a series, one, one video in a series of many videos that I'm going to be producing on, on what I call, what I would like to call, uh, many people call it Pidgin English. I want to call it uh, Manjunga Talk. I can, I can get into the uh, etymology of Manjunga Talk. But uh, the word Manjunga Talk is uh, synonymous with Pidgin English. And uh, today I'm not going to be teaching English. I'm going to just introduce you to to uh, to Pidgin, Manjunga talk, which is Pidgin English, like I said earlier. And then uh, in subsequent videos, I'll be producing, uh, you know, some type of pedagogical uh, platforms for for teaching for teaching uh, Pidgin English. So today I just want to give you a background, like I said, about uh, Pidgin English, Manjunga talk. What is what is Manjunga talk? Manjunga talk is um, is is a Cameroonian Creole. Okay? It's a language that was. Um, that has been spoken in Cameroon now for the past, uh, I would say, 500 years. Uh, when the Portuguese came to Cameroon uh, in the, you know, many, many years, many hundreds of years ago, uh, they interacted with Cameroonians who didn't who didn't speak uh, Portuguese, and so therefore there was this uh, crisscrossing between Portuguese and, and English and and, and 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 local languages, and and also uh, uh, some some English because when the, the British force came. After that, during the era of colonization, there was uh, the what I call um, some type of uh, cross linguistic linguistic colonization, and so today we have in Cameroon a phenomenon, a linguistic phenomenon that we call uh, uh, Pidgin English or Manjunga talk, and it has become the main lingua franca uh, in Cameroon uh, because this language is actually um, you know it is not associated with any particular tribe; it's a free it's not free in the sense of free, but in the in, in sense that it's not, because most languages, we have over 240 something languages in Cameroon, and each of these languages that, I've, you know, that I'm referencing, uh, have a, a ha, each of the languages has a, a, an ethnic base, okay? So it's an, it belongs to, um, to a particular ethnic group in Cameroon. But Pigeon seems to be extraordinary because it doesn't belong to any particular ethnic group, and that's why um, it is, it, it is a, a, very, a very interesting language. Um, so pigeon in Cameroon, we actually have uh, five varieties of, of pigeon. Okay, we have five varieties of pigeon. The first variety is the pigeon spoken in the north, in the north, uh, northwest region of Cameroon. We generally refer that to that part of the country as as the grass fields. Okay, the grass fields. If you hear any Cameroonian talk to you about the grass fields, he's referring to um, the northwest region. So we have a particular kind of uh, manjunga talk there or pigeon that is very unique to that region. Why? Because it, you know, it, it borrows from the, the cultural, the sociocultural realities of that region. And so if you listen to, a, uh, you know, a Grafie man speak pigeon, and you listen, on the other hand, to somebody, the, the Sawa folks, the people from the Southwest province, uh, sorry, we no longer talk about provinces, we talk about regions right now. If you listen to somebody from the Southwest region speak pigeon, if you are a linguist, you will realize that they said there are little, there are slight nuances, okay, choice of words, uh, pronunciation and so on and so forth, and so these are you need to be a linguist to be able to identify and spot and spot these differences. So that's the second type of pigeon we have in Cameroon, the sour pigeon. Then they have the littoral, or what we call the francophone French. Okay, it's normally sp spoken in the littoral region, is spoken in the west west region, west region, um, and and many other francophone cities like Kongsamba and so on and so forth. So that's category number three. The fourth category of pigeon that we have in Cameroon is the uh, the uh, uh, what I call the northern pigeon, the pigeon spoken by the Fulanis and the the Fulbes in the in the three um, in the three regions in 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 north north of Cameroon. And so that we call the some people call it uh, derogatory, derogate, you know, in a derogative manner they call it the Bororo, the Bororo uh, pigeon. Bororo are yeah, the uh, the nomads, the, the guys who. Who go from place to place with cattle in Cameroon. 
And so that kind of pigeon, it's a very unique and very peculiar to that, uh, that, uh, to that uh, racial group in Cameroon. And the last category of, um, of pigeon that we have, or Manjuga talk that we have in Cameroon, is uh, the what I call liturgical uh, uh, Manjuga talk or pigeon. And that is uh, the, the pigeon that is writ written in, uh, in the Bible, okay? So religious pigeon. It's very that one is very mechanical. If you grab a Bible in pigeon in pigeon English or in Majuga, you you realize it's very mechanical because and the reason is very easy. The, this pigeon was written by the whites. It was written by white missionaries who don't speak the language. We don't speak pigeon the way we speak it because we're, we are native speakers of English, of pigeon. And so, and so that that's the that's the what I call the linguistic the landscape. Okay, the panoramic is it's a panoramic. Uh, you know. Uh, walk down down the the the, the la la linguistic lane in Cameroon, in, in, as far as um, uh, Manjunga talk is concerned. And so, I've I've taken I've taken this this uh, linguistic phenomenon very seriously. Uh, I've produced uh, previous videos on uh, my my take on the on the on the importance of um, of Manjunga talk. I've written books in uh, in Manjunga talk uh, for anybody who is interested. As I, like I said today. Uh, this today, this video is just an intro. So I will be introducing folks to uh, my perception of of of, of Manjunga talk and, uh, and and why it is important. But I like to give uh, read out a few titles, uh, books that I've written on Manjunga talk. The first one is Tori Tori Sweet for Tori Sweet for Cameroon Pidgin English. That's the first uh, book that the uh, that the if, if that's the first book of sh uh, short stories that I've published in uh, in Cam in Manjunga talk. So if you're interested, you can get this book um, on Amazon or through uh, uh, Africa Africa Book Collective or through eight books and or half price books and the, the outlets are many. The second book that I've produced in uh, in Manjunga Talk is uh, called Poem for Babakwa in Pigeon English. And that one uh, is a poetic anthology that I've uh, written entirely in um, in, uh, in in Manjunga Talk. Um, so that's that's another. Uh, uh, the well documented book that you could read and see how i um, i um i uh, play around with it with uh, with manjunga talk the third book is uh, also another another uh, uh, poetic anthology is titled come come talk poems from poems in pigeon english so come talk poems in pigeon english uh you would see that uh and then the last one is manjunga talk the Manjunga talk is another poetic anthology. I'm currently working on a number of things, um, a number of uh, works that pertain to to uh, to, to Manjunga talk, uh, including um, in, including uh, cre creative work, the literature. And so that's that's it, briefly, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so I uh, I urge you to continue to uh, to uh, you know follow follow me as I produce. Um, uh, more the videos on pigeon, um, uh, but before I uh, I I uh, stop this video, I just want to underscore some of the challenges that we we as uh, promoters of English of pigeon of Manjunga talk uh, do face. The first one is that of um, is that of um, you know um, the challenges that we get from the home gov the home government the home government uh, the the people down there in Cameroon. Don't seem to understand the importance of pidgin English. Um, we personally, I do believe that they they do they they do that they do. There are two things: either they are they they are trying to manifest uh, you know absence of, of of faith, or they just they just don't know anything about the, how language functions and how language can be a, an instrument of, of development. Uh, pidgin English has become a a, a native tongue for many many families in in Cameroon, and I'm, I'm referring to families that uh, you know um, bring together people from different ethnic groups. Let's say, for example, a Bamili K person gets married to somebody from uh, Bafut in the, the north northwest region, uh, and they don't want to. They have this conflict of who are they going to speak? Uh, are we going to teach the children Bafut or going to teach? Uh, uh, the children a language from the Bamiliki region, and uh, in some cases it, it becomes very problematic, and then they resort to a neutral language, which is pidgin. Okay, and so we have, and the children in this kind of matrimonial setup would grow up, uh, you know, having pidgin as their mother tongue. So we have families like that, 
We have, uh, you know, educated people who live in the cities and who get, uh, you know, get involved in, you know, cross-tribal or cross-ethnic marriages. And they, in order to avoid uh, family uh, feuds and family conflicts, they decide to teach the husband, the spouses will decide to teach the, the, ch the children a language that is neutral. Okay, so that's the first, first thing. Number two, Manjunga talk is a language that uh, is a language that belongs to the masses. Okay, so if you want to, and we've seen it, in, seen this in Cameroon, especially given the bad government there, we've seen we've seen it, you know, manifest itself in, in, in you know in Cameroon, where you know if you want to really rally people and drum up uh, support for any kind of mass movement against uh, you know bad government, you're not going to be doing this necessarily in English or French, which are the two official languages in Cameroon. You're going to be doing this in um, in, uh, in 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 Manjunga talk, uh, okay? Because that's a language that, like I said earlier, it is understood by the educated and the non-educated, you know, by men and women, by children and you know, kids and old people. It cuts across all these social strata, and so that's the important thing. And number two, we have to number three, we have to um, secure what I call the linguistic base. Um, we talk about the linguistic configuration of Cameroon. It is, um, you know, 248 languages plus English and French, one of which is Pidgin English. Or you cannot, uh, linguist, multilingualism is a, it's a tool. It's not, a, it's not, a, it's not a, a point of weakness. And so if we're talking about securing the linguistic base in Cameroon, there's no better way to, you know, to do that in, you know, um, other than, you know, promote, promote um, um, the use of uh, Manjunga talk in the, in the school, in the school setup and so on and so forth. In fact, I've written an article titled, uh, you know, the status of uh, Cameroon Pidgin English in the Cameroonian Tower of Babel. And in that article I'm arguing, it's, it's appeared, it's appeared, that article appeared in uh, uh, English Today. So it's a, it's a publication of the uh, University of Cambridge in, in the UK. So anybody who's interested can look, can look that up and, you know, and try to and, and read and see what I'm talking about in that particular article. And so, um, and um, yeah, so we have to, uh, you know, promote uh, this language because that's a language of unification. It is language of uh, of unity. And uh, in, in fact, in my in my article, I'm I'm arguing that the Pidgin English should be recognized as a an official language. Okay, not a national language. Many people don't know the distinction between an official language and a national language. Language. All the other languages in Cam Cameroon has two official languages: English and French. And then the other 240, 40. 40 plus languages are called national languages. A synonymous word for that is indigenous language. And so I'm, I'm arguing, I'm arguing, I'm making a case in that article that Cameroon Pigeon English or Manjunga talk should be elevated to the status of an official language in Cameroon together with French and English. Okay, so that's, that's my take on Manjunga talk, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And so we need to continue to, to, um, to, to, to work hard. And uh, the one major thing that is very, is very prevalent in, uh, in, in discourses relating to uh, Manjunga talk is that of, uh, you know, codification. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, um, I've talked about the five varieties of pigeon in, in Cameroon. Uh, to the best of my knowledge and based on my research, there is no one, uh, you know, a system of orthography. There's no one system of writing Cameroon pigeon. And so it is time for us, you know, to... Um, and to, for those of us linguists who so doesn't care okay about the impact of languages on, on, our, on our social well-being, to sit down and create a think tank that would, um, would uh, you know, um, undertake, you know, shoulder the responsibility of, um, of, of codifying our, our Cameroon Manjunga talk or Cameroon Pidgin English. We need to codify it so that there's uh, something that may look like a uniform, uh, uniform, uh, you know, a way of uh, orthography for, for Cameroon, uh, for Cameroon Pidgin English. And so, and that is feasible. We have other varieties of Pidgin in the, on the African continent. We have a Creole in uh, Sierra Leone and, uh, and so on and so forth. And so, what I'm advocating here is not a novelty. It's, uh, it's something that people have done all, all over the world, and we need to we need to shoulder that responsibility. And so we need to overcome the problem of codification. We need to overcome the problem of governmental resistance, and that uh, you know, uh, which is in stark in violation of the Cameroonian Constitution, because the Cameroonian Constitution is very clear about um, about the place of indigenous languages or national languages in the Cameroonian landscape, and so. That's the, that's, the, that's the point I want to make in this video. 
And I don't want to keep this video uh, too long because people get easily fatigued by, um, you know, um, you know, watching long videos. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, going to try and round up things, uh, round off things here by making you a promise that uh, in subsequent videos, you're going to be hearing me talk about um, how to learn uh, Manjunga talk and, uh, and, and so on and so forth. It's going to be a long series um, of, uh, of videos where people who are not, who are either Cameroonians, but don't know quite a lot about, about, uh, about, uh, about Manjunga talk and the uh, foreigners who are interested in Cam friends of Cameroon or tourists to Cameroon. Uh, we need to be talking, we need to be thinking about uh, pigeon for travel. Okay. Because uh, pigeon is not just a Cameroonian thing. Okay. If you have your, Linguistically alive, you will realize that uh, Cameroon uh, pigeon is not just a linguistic phenomenon in Cameroon. We have Nigerian pigeon, which is very akin. It's almost like a sister language to Cameroonian pigeon or Manjunga talk. We have pigeon spoken in, um, in in Ghana. Okay, if you listen to Ghanaians speak, the pigeon is is pretty close to Cameroonian pigeon. I understand them because I'm a linguist and I I take particular interest in languages. There's Creole in. Um, in uh, Sierra Leone, which is very, very um, similar to what we speak in uh, in Cameroon, there are a few lexical differences. But if you are a smart linguist, you're gonna you're gonna understand what they're saying, regardless of little uh, lexical and semantic differences. And so that's that's my take on this, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I think uh, it's uh, it's a uh, it's a it's a it's a worthwhile uh, endeavor, and we need to uh, we need to shoulder the responsibility squarely and, uh, and make sure that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. So. I want to end on this note and to thank everybody who's listened to me. Uh, have a great weekend, folks, and we'll talk later. Bye-bye.